time to overcome our existential alienation by listening to God's word and by practicing the works of mercy. Each year during Lent, we are reminded that goodness, together with love, justice and solidarity are not achieved once and for all. They have to be realized each day. We are encouraged to raise up the needs of the world in prayer, to sacrifice or fast by giving up food or material wants, and to offer our time, talent and treasure as good stewards of God's gift that he has given us. The Bible portion for our meditation is from the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 to 13. The book of Hebrews encourages Christians to endure and warns them not to abandon their faith in Jesus Christ. It encourages faithfulness, love and sound doctrine. For a short meditation, I would like to focus on three verses from this Bible portion. Verse 5. Do not make the light of Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you. Verse 6. Because the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. And verse 11, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. The word discipline is used 10 times in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 4 to 11, and is therefore highly significant. Many a time, we consider discipline as a punishment and are tempted to think that God does not love us. When hardships come our way, we think that these sufferings are punishments for our sinfulness. However, let us understand that discipline means training, and in the context of the scripture portion that I just read, it is about God training his children lovingly to become spiritual champions. I would like to share my thoughts on why, when, and how of God's discipline with you today. The first question I would like to answer is, why does God discipline us? God loves us and the discipline is an expression of love. The very presence of Lord's discipline in our life is evidence that we are loved by God. Both in Proverbs and Hebrews, we see a comparison between a human father's discipline of a son and God's discipline of us. Our God is a good father who wants the best for his children. One day, Michelangelo was asked how he sculpted such beautiful statues. Pointing to an angel he had just chiseled out of marble, he said, I saw the angel in the marble and I chiseled until I set it free. Everything that God does is good and perfect, and his discipline is good because he is good. We are all pieces of marbles in God's hands. He has to knock off all our rough edges of sinfulness, chisel away the wrong attitudes and erase our character flaws. The purpose of God's discipline is not to punish us, but to transform us and condition us for a life of usefulness and blessedness. Through discipline, God wants to set us free and be all what we can be. The second question I would like to talk about is, when does God discipline us? God's discipline begins when we are born into his family. That is when we begin to learn and understand the word of God and adjust our lives accordingly. Once, a young man was fascinated by a moth and performed a little experiment to see what would happen when it released from its cocoon without a struggle. He used a knife, slit the cocoon, allowing the insect to emerge freely. However, it had none of the expected color, it could not fly, and it soon died. He then realized that the pressure exerted by the cocoon on an emerging moth is essential for its proper development and its existence. Like the moth, for every Christian, life's pressure and discipline produces positive results and is a blessing in our lives. As we read in Psalms chapter 94, verses 12 and 13, Blessed is the one you discipline, Lord, the one you teach from your law. You grant them relief from days of trouble. The times that we currently live in are very challenging, yet we have been able to overcome the obstacle and see God's wonderful grace in our existence. God's discipline also comes when we sin, and this is a form of corrective discipline. In Psalms, we read about David express expressing his desire that God moderate the severity of his punishment. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Moving on to the third question, how does God discipline us? God's discipline throughout the scripture reveals a multitude of actions to bring about the goal of spiritual maturity in us. Adam and Eve invited the curse of death and hardship. David suffered humiliation, famine and war. Peter experienced failure. God allows us to undergo trials and temptations so that our faith will be trusted. 
Once a young boy made a toy boat and then went to sail it in a pond. While he was playing with it along the water's edge, the boat floated beyond its reach. In his distress, he asked an older boy to help him. Without saying a word, the older child picked up some stones, started to throw them towards the boat. The little boy became upset, for he thought that he, uh, the one he had turned to for help was being mean. Soon though, he noticed that instead of hitting the boat, each stone was directed beyond it, making a small ripple that moved the vessel a little nearer to the shore. Every throw of the stone was planned, and at last the treasured boat was brought back to the little boy's waiting hands. God often simply allows the natural consequences of our sin to run their course. We are forgiven, but as recorded in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 32, we are corrected so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us introspect our lives and see where we stand today. Many a time it seems as if God allows circumstances in our lives that are harming us without a sense or plan. How do we respond to such difficulties in our life? Let us remember that whenever we face trials of any kind, it is a time of testing of our faith and that will surely lead us to perseverance. These are God's loving way of drawing us closer to Him and assuring Him that He is in control. The result of God's discipline is holiness and maturity that allows us to realign our will to His. So may God bless us with these words. Let us pray. Abba Father, we bow before you today asking for your discipline in our lives so that souls are trained to make us holy and prepare us to be in your presence. As meditated on your word and understanding the importance of discipline in our lives, we ask you to draw us away from what will cause us harm and lead us into likeness of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to each one of us. In our sweet and precious name, we pray. Amen.